Hi, today is May 31st, 2024, and here are my poems for the day. The first one is poem number 840 for the year, Skyline. On the weekends, the MTA likes to fuck the trains to make things awful for anybody who plans to do anything that might involve a subway on a Saturday or a Sunday or a holiday. Last weekend was three days of fucked trains, and last Sunday, on my way to the crashed spaceship, maybe a half hour before I saw the monk, see poem number 835, I found myself inconveniently riding the N train into Brooklyn. Usually, I take the L to the G to get to the studio, and I have no idea what the MTA did to fuck the L last weekend, but fuck it, they did. It's like the MTA gets super horny on the weekends, and it will fuck anything that moves until it can't move or until it's rerouted in some hopelessly confusing way, and last weekend was no exception. So I was riding backwards on the N, which I think was going over the R line. It was going over a bridge to Brooklyn, whereas I usually take the L, which goes through a tunnel, but the L was fucked. So I got a bland-looking view of the Manhattan skyline as I was heading backwards into Brooklyn, and I thought, thank you, MTA, for fucking the trains, because one of these days I will write a poem about the skyline, and maybe one day I will write a poem about the skyline instead of a poem about how the MTA likes to fuck trains on the weekends. And if I write that poem, I wonder what it'll be like. Poem number 841, Schadenfreude. I was almost too excited to meditate yesterday afternoon. I saw an alert that the verdict had come in, and a quick verdict is usually bad for defendants. So I was kind of excited, but I was still able to close my eyes at about eight minutes after five, and when I opened them again, the news was out and the last vestiges of the shitty attitude that I had been bogged down by vanished. I'd like to thank the jury and the prosecutors and the criminal justice system. Now and then, things go right, and it's a nice feeling. It's a feeling of schadenfreude, that I'm not exactly proud of it, but I am not ashamed of it either. It's a feeling of schadenfreude, and I'm not exactly proud of it, but I'm not ashamed of it either. Poem number 842, Shitty Attitude. Yesterday, while interviewing myself for the introduction to the book that this poem is in, I told the interviewer about having felt totally shitty the day before when I went to do my show. Sometimes I go in with a great attitude and things don't go well, I said, and sometimes I go in with a shitty attitude and things go fine or better than fine. As I was saying these things, or to be more accurate, typing them, it occurred to me that I might write a poem about it. So here I am, writing a fairly shitty poem, about a shitty attitude that I had for about a day. The night before last, I went in with a shitty attitude and things went fine. And by yesterday morning, I was feeling a lot better. And now I'm fucking ecstatic. This feeling will pass, as did the shitty attitude. But I will enjoy it while it's here. Poem number 843 on teaching. In addition to being interviewed by myself yesterday, I was also interviewed by Scott Kutchler for his WBCQ radio show. We spoke a lot about process, and a couple of times he said, I'm always telling my students, and it had never occurred to me to be grateful that I am not a teacher, but it occurred to me to wonder whether teaching would cause me to be more focused on process than I already am. I don't have a lot of rules or guidelines for writing, I just do it. But if I were a teacher, I'd have to teach something, wouldn't I? I'd probably feel like I had to offer some rules or guidelines or tricks or techniques, and I'm sure I have tricks and I know I follow certain guidelines, but I rarely think about such things. And I don't know if I want to. But what the fuck do I know? Maybe I'd love teaching and maybe I'd be a better writer. By better, I mean that I would be better at going deeper, or at least I think that's what I mean. Many of my favorite writers taught, and maybe, and many didn't. So I don't fucking know. And last poem of the day, poem number 844, Goodbye, May. May, you went out with a bang, with a deep sense of conviction and justice. The way they got Al Capone on taxes instead of anything real, that's how they got Trump. And I'm not crying for either of them. May, you gave me a lovely glow that I will carry with me until at least November and hopefully beyond. Goodbye, May, and thank you. All right, that's it. Now I gotta put these poems, all the May poems, into a book and hopefully get that out today because, you know, it's the last day of the month. I appreciate you.